Conversations. Conversations with with S. D. Booker. Booker. Is the life I'm living meaningful enough to justify a suffering? <laughs> because suffering, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're all going to suffer. We're going to go through some suffering. But we got to choose our suffering. And what's the end game? Is this life meaningful enough? What I'm going through meaningful enough to justify the suffering I'm going through? And, uh, yeah, I was just looking through the Bible, just different people. We could just take like Jacob, uh, Leah, and Rachel. They all suffer, right? Jacob suffered. I mean, I guess an in, indentured servant to her, their father for a total mm-hmm. of 14 years, basically, right? Yeah. L- Leah suffered. She wasn't the chosen one, really. Right. Rachel couldn't have kids initially. They're, they're all suffering. But what came from that suffering, the 12 tribes, the promise that was validated, the covenant that was fulfilled, I think they would say it was worth it. So I think, you know, (laughs) I think they lost a lot. They lost a lot. I can't speak for them, of course. But we take that. So we don't know if those people exist or not, right? But let's take it. Let's apply it to ourselves. We've all suffered. And so we suffer sometimes we didn't necessarily, well, I guess we all choose our suffering, but we chose to stay into something, a suffering that we could have gotten out of, maybe for the wrong reasons. And we didn't just take a step back and say, the life I'm living, is this worth the suffering? You know, what's the end game? What's the covenant? What's the promise I'm trying to fulfill? And some people do, though. They say, I want to I wanna make sure my kids are... Or, or grown or, or going to college before I get out of the situation. But what's the sacrifice? Is it is it really worth it? What are you giving up to do that? You know, if they're mm-hmm. saying mom getting beat, is it worth it? Or if you're just unhappy and you guys have grown apart. Yeah, you know, that's a different thing to being beat. <laughs> right. So, you know. I don't know. What, what do you want to do? <laughs> I kind of threw you for a loop. No, that's that's perfectly fine. I mean, I'm just thinking, thinking about all the stuff you're saying. Woo. That's <laughs> that's deep. Yeah, I mean, we, we got to choose it. We got to choose our suffering. Like, like, Jesus chose his suffering. He chose He chose his death. He chose his suffering. Do you choose your suffering or do you choose your path and accept the suffering that goes with it? Choose your path and accept the suffering that goes with it. I can see that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. Whatever, I choose my path and mm-hmm. whatever comes with it, I can say I'm with it. That's my path. Um, what is the path? Is it, is because it, I remember, I, that, that just reminds me of a time when I was a young girl. I think I was only 11 or 12 years old. And I, I loved the nighttime. I loved, you know, creeping out of bed when I was supposed to be in bed and watching the moon and stars and just, you know, having that quiet time. Right. And I remember one time just having this burning feeling inside of me that I wanted to know truth. I just didn't feel like what I seen on a day-to-day basis was really my truth. Right. And I remember saying out loud, looking at the sky and saying out loud, show me truth, no matter what it takes. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, sometimes that. I look back on that many years ago and I wonder what I really have said that if I would have known the amount of suffering, the amount of immense suffering that I had to go through to get to that. Right. I hope I would have. But, you know, the thing is, is I, I honestly think. Um, you know, for myself anyway, I chose the path and then accepted the suffering that came with it, not letting it pull me from the path that I knew that I wanted to find my truth, whatever it was. Hmm. Uh, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so, so, okay, so you're that's interesting. So, you're on your path, and in this stage. There's life. We have characters. 
they, they play their part, but we're the main character. Can we exit left or tell them to exit left? Like because you're you're taking away from the scene, you're taking away from the plot where where we're going. So you gotta you gotta get out of here so we can keep keep focus, or do we we keep the same characters? Cause I've I've taken characters out of my life off the stage so I can concentrate on the path. I done oh, yeah. that. Oh yeah, I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. Um. So my question to you is, <laughs> does suffering only come from other people? <laughs> That's a good question. And I thought about that too, right? So I think there's two types of suffering, mainly. Uh, self-inflicted, mm -hmm. you know, self-inflicted. And I think that comes a lot from hurt, uh, things that are in our subconscious, pains that we haven't dealt with. And then, and then we have other suffering. Uh, that's unwilled, so to speak, is unwilled. People have their things they're suffering from, and we brought them into our lives, or we come into each other's lives. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's going on in their subconscious, mm -hmm. their past, their right. deep hurts. So we're connected now. <laughs> and so now we married a, 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 a drug user, a, a, a drug addict, right? Yeah. We That's not in our subconscious, right, to be addicted to drugs, but it's in theirs. And now it's revealed. Now we're married. We're in the same household. We got kids. I'm a part of that suffering now. Like, I got to go through whatever comes with that. I'm going through that now. Now, mm -hmm. now what is it in us that says, I got to get out of this? Or to keep holding on? Because there are some miracle stories there are some stories to where the person has triumphed, overcome, and now the couple is testifying about it. <laughs> when, yeah. when, like, what, 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 what says, I got to get out of here year nine, year 10, year five, or let me ride this out. And it changes, it changes in year 20, or, or maybe it never changes. Like, did, did, you, did we pull the trigger too <laughs> soon or not soon enough? Because I've seen both. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. I have too. Wow. I mean, I suppose it depends on how uh, the one that's, the one that's, you know, I don't know. You're in it together. You're, you know, let's look at the drug abuser. They're, they're, in, actually inflicting their own suffering on themselves right by right. some of that stuff so they're inflicting it probably because of a, a a mortal wound of some kind that's in their psyche all right so now you look at the other party that's suffering with them basically when we choose a spouse i think we choose you know we choose the suffering for better or worse but it, it does, you know, I can say this from personal experience, it, it gets to a point where if you're not careful, it can, it can destroy you. I mean, it can literally, you know, when it gets to a point where you're losing, you're losing your focus, you're losing your path, you're losing everything. I don't know. I don't see holding out on that just because what use is it if you, if you end up dying? And you never fulfilled your purpose. Right. Right. Because that will happen. Yeah, that, that will, will happen yeah. where, where, you know, the body can go into such depression and such whatever that it will shut down. And it's a subconscious choice that you would rather die than be in a certain situation. It happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I think when it comes to a point, we talk about this a lot, uh, we mm -hmm. talked about it last time we spoke two weeks ago or three weeks ago. Um, mm -hmm. Polarity, give and take, the law, one of the laws of the universe. And when I don't think anything is going to be an equal balance, 50 50, but it should yeah. go back and forth, right? Fluctuate, right? Right. right. When this thing, when the scales are just <laughs> constantly like this, yeah. I, I think you got to start looking at tapping out, like like cutting off people. You know, uh, but I think realistically, you know, things should flow like this, right? 
and, like and, and yes, and even if it gets like this, uh, the pendulum, you know, swings way over, right? Yeah. I mean, you have your moments. It's like this. We've all hit rock bottom. Uh, mm -hmm. had those moments, right? But then it swung over, and so we're we're back on the other side, right? But in a relationship. If it's constantly like this, I mean, we're talking about five, ten years. I mean, what purpose are you fulfilling? Right. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's time to cut off. There, it's not worth it. Yeah, and and you're at, at some point, it's like you're subconsciously trying to go against the law of the universe, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you won't win. What are you here for? And that's right. the whole thing. Every one of us needs to remember, what are we here for? We're not here to just go make money and get rich. No. Right. What are we here for? Right. right. Every one of us, I know every one of us had a, had a purpose before we chose to come. And the challenge for us is to actually tap into that and remember why we came. Mm. We come here to earth and it's like a little kid in a candy shop. There's this and there's this and there's this and there's this. Oh, look at this and look at this. And we get all distracted and we forget. It's kind of like as a little child, you know, sometimes your mom would send you somewhere. My mom would send me to the neighbor's house, walk over there and borrow some eggs if she was out or something like that. And you're walking along the way and you, you see these berries. Oh my, the berries are ripe. You start picking them. You see this, you see this. And you get distracted and pretty soon time goes on and your mom's like, Hey, where are the eggs? <laughs> right, right. And that's, that's what we do when we come here. We forget what purpose we were sent for. Wow. You know what? You hit something on the head. I've been dealing with that for the last two, three days. Doing a lot of research on that. The word, yeah. the word remember. And that's another thing that goes over our heads. Remember, remember. And you've mentioned this before. Which is which is uh, which is pretty unique because a lot of people don't mention that word remember, but um, remember to recall to uh, be mindful of. So we talk about the subconscious a lot, and to remember it doesn't mean we we forgotten. Right. It means we were distracted. We were distracted. But it's there. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's there. So we got to recall it. Be mindful of. Uh, what's important. So, in in the Bible, you'll see quite often, you'll see quite often, God, you'll see either David or another uh, prophet says, do you remember, remember this, remember that? Or you'll see, you'll see the scripture says, and God remembered. He remembered and blessed Rachel, or bless Leah, or or he did this or did that. Remember, and that's not saying God forgets. It, it, it's it's more of an affirmation when you say, when these people are saying, "Remember, God, you said this." It's like when your child or our children say, "Remember, Mom, remember Dad." They're saying, "Be mindful of what you're saying," and it's an affirmation more so. They're being respectful. But it's an affirmation yeah. to uphold the covenant, the agreement you said you would do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they, they're being respectful. So they're not just going to tell you, but they're, they're kind of affirming. Remember, mm -hmm. this was the covenant. Remember, this was the agreement. You said I can go to my friend's house. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so it's an affirmation more. It's more of an affirmation. And any time in the Bible, God says, it says, God remembers. I'm telling you, look this up. Any time it says God remembers, it's followed with an action. Every yeah, time. Yeah, that's true. That Every is true. time. That it's followed, is true. Yes. He's not just daydreaming. <laughs> no. He's recalling. He's holding himself. He, he won't be a liar. He won't be made a liar. So I'm affirming. This is the covenant. This was the promise. Let's let's uphold it. And that comes back to our word. Again, people have no idea. You know, you know, people say, okay, yes, in the Bible it talks about, you know, God was is within us. We are God, whatever it is, whatever. It's because God is within us. However, 
in the beginning was the word and the word was God. So when you really look at that, it becomes so incredibly serious because we are only as good as our word. That's we it. are only as good as our weakest promise. That's it. It's That's powerful. pretty serious. Because it's you see serious. people all the time just shooting their mouth off, saying this and saying that, and they're not even intending to keep that. Yeah, yeah. They just put anything out there, and they don't really realize how powerful the words are. The word is. The word. And, and, and you know, you know something interesting. Um, there's a, a a verse in the Bible that says, "By your word, you'll be justified," or "By your word, you'll be condemned." And there's something really interesting. They've done this research on. Um, so when you speak the words, your, your, your ears hear them. Yes. When you yes. think the words, your ears don't hear them. You're just thinking. Yes. It's a whole different scenario. A whole different scenario. But when you, when you, they have found that when you say people that say the, say words all the time, make promises that they don't, they're not going to keep. Maybe they intend to, maybe they don't, but they don't keep them. Whatever the case over and over and over. It actually comes to the point where you don't trust yourself at all. Your right. body doesn't trust anything you say because yeah. you say it, but you don't do it. Right, right. So Very when you important. get in that scenario, your body doesn't even, it, it. when you say something, technically your cells are saying, oh, that's BS. <laughs> it's not even, right. because right. because you're of your pattern. Right. So people don't even understand that they dig themselves into all these problems with their words. Right, right. You're training your psyche, you're training your spirit, your body to adapt to whatever you say or don't say. Like, if you go, if you go uh, two days, well, if you're in the habit of eating at noon, your body is waiting to yeah. eat at noon. But if you go three, four, five days, it adapts. It's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to eat at noon anymore. It, it's mm -hmm. just, you're training it. Yeah. And uh, the word is the most powerful thing in doing that. Yeah. So I've seen those people, I've seen this happen so many times where these type of people start learning about affirmations and start learning about manifesting and they can't figure out why it doesn't work. But they're still, on the other hand, making all these, oh, I'll do this and do this and do this and never intend to do it, never do it at all. Right. How are they going to manifest anything when on their daily life to their children, to their neighbors, to whoever it is, they're saying all these things but not keeping them. Your your manif it's not going to manifest anything because your body doesn't even believe anything you're saying. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah, we don't even we're not even taught that. Like we just say these things, being a man of your word. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's deeper. It's deeper than just somebody trusting you. Yeah, it's you trusting you. It's you trusting you. That's the foundation. <laughs> when you trust yeah. you, it will generate trust in other people. Believe it or not. So, so if we find, if we find that people aren't trusting us, we need to seriously look inside because we're not trusting ourselves, and they're just mirroring us. Mm, yeah. It's, it, it, they don't even probably even know why. No. <laughs> yeah. You hadn't even manifested or done anything tangibly to say, don't trust me, but it's the energy. Right. It is energy. And it's wow. like, you're. Your vibration is saying, I can't be trusted because you're not trusting yourself. And generally that comes back, not trusting yourself generally comes back to not keeping your word to yourself. Even something as simple as, oh, you know, um, I'm going to change my diet. I'm going to, I'm going to be careful. I'm going to do this and do that. You're saying that to yourself and then comes mealtime and you say, oh, and I forget it. Oh, now your body goes, oh, I heard you say that this morning, but you decided not to. Wow. Yeah, Literally that's building distrust within you of yourself. Wow, and that's that's breaking the covenant, and uh, huh? yeah, and, and 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 actually, you know, we don't talk about this enough. That's really infidelity. People just think about sex like <laughs> being infidelity, right. but breaking the covenant, you know, uh, going against the word you gave yourself. Like we do it all. You know, the time. you know, I've taught trust law for years, and breach of trust is the most serious thing you can have in trust law. Wow. Breach of trust is a serious crime. Now, literally, that's what you're doing to yourself is you are breaching your own trust 
And they say that the karma from breaching your own trust is almost worse than if you kill somebody. I mean, that's hard to imagine, but if you stop and think about it. Wow. Well, wow. Breaching your own trust. Yeah, I mean, because the word is so powerful. Just from the word, you can change someone's life and they're going another direction. And yeah. Yeah, they're going you to know, partnership. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think about a scenario. Think about this scenario where um, let's say you call somebody. It doesn't matter what it is or whatever. You're like, okay, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'll meet you tomorrow at such and such a time or I'll call you tomorrow at such and such a time. All right, it's a deal. And so maybe they put it on their calendar. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. See, what I found for myself is, especially if you're super busy, when you make your word, you better put a reminder because you'll forget. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I learned that. You have to hold. And, and literally, that's holding yourself accountable. That's self-discipline. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, again, again, the self-discipline part is so important for keeping to the purpose that you're, you know, we don't always know our whole purpose. We don't usually know our whole purpose. It's like we're revealed our purpose on this planet little by little as we establish trust within ourselves that we can do this that we can almost like you have to build trust you have to build trust within yourself just like you have to build trust with other people wow that trust and covenant the handshake the agreement wow that's so important and it all starts within ourselves mm-hmm Uh, would you say, would you say to you, would you say that's a, that's a feminine energy? Intuition? Yeah. Wow. That's a good question. Uh, normally I mean, everybody I, has it, but yeah, everybody <laughs> has it. Um, everybody has it. I think it's stronger in, in women. I think it's stronger in women. Um, but Come to think of it, it all depends. It all depends too, because it depends what our weakness is. We can lose our intuition. Right, I agree. Yeah, so a man can lose his intuition if it's catering to his weakness, and a mm -hmm. woman can see it. So uh, take for instance, uh, um, <laughs> we, we laugh about this. Me and Yaya, we may be... Uh, in a group setting or she may go to a cigar lounge with me or something and and she'll say that uh some woman is liking me is, is is flirting with me well i'm not even seeing it like i'm not like for real like it's just over my head right because i'm just i'm just conversing right yeah. like like me and you like this is nothing new to me conversing with women it, it right. doesn't have to be anything sexual like right you know, and I'm, I don't want to sound like this, <laughs> this this big simp, but I don't necessarily have to see a woman as a piece of meat. Like, we, we just, there's people, right? We're people. Right, right. So we're conversing. And uh, it may just go over my head, right? And she's like, she's telling me later, that woman really likes, she, she's liking you. I'm like, nah, nah, we're just <laughs> chopping. She said, no, I'm telling you. And later it comes to be, yeah. That's that's what it was. So her intuition sees certain things, right? But on the flip, let's say someone's trying to sell her something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's catering to her weakness, right? And I'm the saying right yeah, the, the yeah, that's the vulnerability. And that's that's yeah. what yes. that's what, what I was sharing with somebody just this morning was that uh, well, it was, it was a young lady and she was kind of spouting off that, oh, well, you know, why, why are, are uh, boys allowed to go out at, at a younger age and do this and this and this and the girls have to do it? And I said, you know, uh, I said, you, one thing you really have to realize is that as women, we are very vulnerable in some of those areas. Yeah. When you're young, especially, you're very vulnerable. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, but I think, but still, um, she wasn't understanding the dynamic of, you know, in some areas, right. in, in, in some areas, she's like, well, 
the the men are more vulnerable in some areas i said that's true but not in this area we're talking about that would be putting a teenage girl out on the streets at a young vulnerable age and thinking right. she has the the mentality to actually make right decisions no right right, right. you know and, and not but just now, vulnerable now, it's, it's a, 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 in a teenage boy is it's not quite the same right and it's, it's just not just vulnerable dynamic. yeah it's not it's not just vulnerable physically no yeah it, it's it's the heart <laughs> it's it's uh you know, uh, ladies or, or girls are more susceptible, more open to helping mm -hmm. uh, someone that's in need. Let's go help him. Yeah, right. let's go. Let's like, like, no, no, we're not going to go help him. Yeah, yeah. but, but no, look, he's 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 bleeding. <laughs> he, he has he has two kittens with him. Like, no, oh, no. <laughs> I know, I know. No, we're gonna we're gonna mind our business. <laughs> and we're gonna go over here. like so it happens a lot too. Uh I've seen a few stories where women have tried to help homeless people. And you know, I help the homeless too, right? Uh but you got to have some discernment and 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 there goes that intuition, right? And women have been caught off guard a lot with, with the well, homeless. Well what I find is that your intuition so for example, let's just say you and I were out walking in the jungle let's just just use this as a scenario right generally the woman is going to have sooner have the sixth sense to tell when a, a panther is creeping up on him than the man because mm. she has to have that to protect the young yes that's natural that's natural however when you get into something where um you see like what you were just talking about feeling sorry for somebody that's right. when our heart takes over and our intuition doesn't work and that's <laughs> right. where that's where we need a man that can clearly see and say, oh, no, 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 <laughs> just <Yeah>. no. <laughs> see, that, that goes back to what we had a discussion on, the chakras. Yeah. That polarity and, and feeling and protecting one another. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you got to take the forefront on some things. And sometimes I got to take the for, for, forefront on some things. Mm -hmm. But we got to cover one another. As, as man and woman, got to cover one another. And... uh yeah, because I know from experience when I see somebody, you know, homeless and stuff like that, man, there's no solar plexus chakra protection whatsoever. It's just all hard. I'm just like, oh, you know, yeah. and I, I found out later there was um, one, one, he looked like a poor old man. <laughs> and I found out he was a professional beggar that, that owned a mansion and, you know, these, all these high dollar cars. And that's how he made his living. He'd travel state to state. <laughs> right, right, right. Like yeah. what? <laughs> But see, but see, the the average man would would look through that, right? I, I'm telling you what I look at, right? So <laughs> we're we're looking at even with the homes, we're looking at. Okay, hold up, hold up. Uh, these shoes look brand spanking new, <laughs> and and I could tell, you know, your skin is not weathered, your hair is healthy. Something something ain't right here. <laughs> like uh -huh. you're looking pretty healthy <laughs> I, like but the, the woman just see it's a guy begging mm -hmm. yeah so yeah it's, it's 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 crazy yeah it's weird how yeah <laughs> but uh we, we were talking about this before right that uh even when and you brought something to my attention on this like when you look at movies and people can apply this, look at their own lives, but we'll take movies. When we look at movies and we see uh, a couple is sleeping, a married couple, whatever, girlfriend, boyfriend are sleeping. And then there's something in this movie that's going on. Somebody's breaking into the house, trying to break into the home. Mm -hmm. Something's going on. I want y'all people to look at this. <laughs> Go back and think about this. It's always the woman who hears it who wakes up and and then she wakes up the husband. Right. He's dead asleep. Now he may brush her off. I've seen that and everybody is up killed, right? Or he might he might take her advice and go see what happens. See what's yeah. happening. See what's out there. But I was doing some studying. I was like, dang, why is that? And then come to find out that women sleep longer than men. But men get better sleep. 
uh, the woman's mind is always going, uh, if you look at it, they have more anxiety issues than us, uh, than men. The mind is going. It's the subconscious. They are subconscious energy. And we're the conscious energy, right? Uh, but their mind is always going. So it's rare to find a woman just dead asleep to where she's hearing yeah. nothing. Like right. if she's if she's that way, she she's 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 crashed, right? She's like she her body is saying, No, I'm shutting you down. Yeah. But but normally speaking, women always hear what's going on. And a lot of times you'll see also women will sleep with their eyes sometimes almost open sometimes or halfway a little bit open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, my my sister sleeps like that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So but I found that I found that to be be amazing. Uh but it's just about us learning each other and knowing each other, our our, our weaknesses and strengths. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, that goes back to your point that as a woman, you have to be more alert uh than than a man. You know. Um as a man, and I guess it may be ego, and I think most men feel this way, even if I'm dead asleep, if I get attacked in my sleep, once I wake up I still got a fighter's chance. <laughs> <laughs> right. And and I I've wondered too because like I know in the group that I um was in they and they really played it up in the ways they shouldn't have but they talked about in the Bible how it talked about the woman being the weaker vessel well and it's like I used to get frustrated because I grew up in a household of boys I grew up in a classroom of boys I there were just hardly any girls around and I got frustrated because. I wanted, I wished I could do some of the things the boys did just because they had more fun. I didn't have anyone to do anything with. And, but, but yet some of the things they did, I couldn't do. And I knew I couldn't do Right. because right. for example, I find it quite interesting how cars run, working on cars and things like that. And I had this old car that I, you know, kept trying to fix up and this and that, but I couldn't, I didn't have the power to the strength to actually get a lot of those bolts when I wanted to change something. So I'd have to call one of the boys. That's just a fact of life. We can't. And, and, you know, I hear women, like, especially younger women all the time. Oh, we don't need a man. Oh, we don't need. Oh, really? You really don't. Okay. So when your car breaks, who's fixing it? You're taking it to the shop. I can guarantee you there's, it's not a women's shop. Right. And they're not even thinking what they're saying. We need each other. Right. We don't have the, we don't have the strength to do some of those things. I mean, there might be, you know, there's rare women that maybe have, you know, super whatever strength, but it's, it's really rare. Right. And, and, and we both have weaknesses, uh, but, but there's something we're missing a lot of times we're, we're, we're missing the ER weaker. It didn't say the, the woman is the weak sex. Right, 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 right. The weaker. So to, so something has to be weaker, there has to be a weak. Like, there's a comparison. <laughs> okay. So we're both weak. Yeah. We both have weaknesses. Yeah. But it's saying That's the woman is, yeah, so the woman is the weaker. It's not saying she's the only weak one. <laughs> no, she's the oh, weak. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we don't look at it. The weaker. If I say mm-hmm. if I say I'm stronger than you, I'm not saying you're not strong. Right. Oh wow. <laughs> right. You're, I, wow. You, yeah. If, that if is I'm, right, because because if I felt you were not strong, I would just say you're weak or you're not strong. <laughs> right. But, but if I say I'm stronger than you, I'm acknowledging that you're strong. I'm acknowledging <laughs> I'm just stronger than you. <laughs> okay. Okay. That makes sense. Right. Wow. I mean, yeah. So we both have weaknesses. Yeah. Yeah. We no no doubt about that. And I love when when it says "let there be light," or or it says, "Well, not let there be light," or and it was so. And I was like, man, right. when it says "and it was so," I look at that as when we create, when we come together with one another. And it's showing the masculine and the feminine coming together with with 
the Holy Spirit hovering over us, being an interpreter for us. We're coming together, creating. We have to create from a present tense standpoint, not a future tense. Mm -hmm. It was so, and it was so. Because the universe of the Holy Spirit, the universe, doesn't understand future tense. Oh, here yeah. we go. Yeah, it only understands present tense. So if I tell you, if you say, if you tell me, uh, if you come to me and say, honey, can you, can you take out the trash? Mm -hmm. And I say, I'll get to it. <laughs> like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it means you're not going to. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... I may, I may, <laughs> yeah. but does, 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 that, does that mean in five minutes? Does that mean tomorrow? Like, what, what does that, like, what does that even mean though? <laughs> and then you come back and say, I thought you said, and I say, which is true. I said, I said, I'll get to it. That is true. <laughs> but if I say, if I say, uh, you say take out the take out the trash, and I say instead of saying and it was so right, <laughs> you'd be like what? But I say <laughs> I say consider it done. Mm. Wow, wow, that's a different <laughs> feeling. Wow, <laughs> that, right? In, in, <laughs> in, in your mind, it's done. Right, it's done. You ain't got to come back and, and look like it's done. No, no exactly. You are right. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, and that's how the universe takes in stuff. You know, so that's the true. That's the true God energy right there. The the word the, the the word is God. Yes. So so how we structure our words, man. I'm telling you, the first scenario, the first response was like, oh, he's not going to do it. The second response would be, oh, I don't even need to worry. And you know, that's interesting. That makes me think of something. You know the way we respond to each other, I think is a huge, has a huge impact on how we build or, or even take the stress off of each other. Yes. So yeah. if you think about the first scenario, then she's going to be wondering, well, did he do it yet? Look, no, he didn't. Did he do it yet? Yeah. And then the, the second one, she's not even going to care. She's not even no. going to give it another thought. Yeah. And that's that, and that's going to hurt her, her that controlling aspect of women is going to kick in, right? <laughs> no, look, now, now she's at work. She's at work thinking about it. Did he, did he take out the trash? Did he do that? Her anxiety kicks in. Like we got to know how you're right. got to know how to communicate with one another. And so we can bring each other ease. Like you, you like to talk about and not dis ease. Bring right. each other ease. Wow. That's huge. Yeah, and men got to understand that about women. You know, we, we say you guys bicker a lot, complain, but we, if we really understand the psyche and how we're created, we'll cherish it more and don't mm -hmm. see it and not see it as a hindrance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, we'll, we'll have more tolerance yeah. and love and appreciation for the essence, the true essence of one another. Yeah. Wow, that is real interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah, we get frustrated because we don't understand. Yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. we just don't understand. Yeah, and all it is is a little twist on words. Again, use the Man. God energy in your words, not the what's the op opposite energy of the God energy. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, wow. Yeah, me just twisting that saying, consider it done, opposed to I'll get to it. Oh man, I gave you so much security. Man, I can't even tell you the difference <laughs> that, of the feeling that that makes me feel. Yeah, security. <laughs> You're right. Yeah, that's like, what a I woman don't wants. Have to worry because because you know I know what that's like. Oh, um, you know, you ask somebody, would you please, would you please do this? And uh, you know, okay, they'll say okay, and then nothing happens. And you know it needs to be done, so you're you're worrying because because you know you know if they're not going to do it, you have to come along and pick up the rest of that load on your own. You're going to have to do it, so you have to. It's not an issue of, um, oh, I'm going to control them to do it. No, it's not that. It's just that you know for the health of your environment. For I mean, if the trash gets let set for days and days and starts to smell and this and that, 
now that's no. infringing on your environment your yeah. nest you have to yeah. remember a woman's home is her nest and yeah. we have that nesting instinct all the time that that, that nest you know has to be clean and, and safe that that's yeah. a, that's an instinct i didn't realize yeah. that till some time ago that you know when, when a woman gets frustrated let's say she'll she'll um scold you for coming in with your shoes mm-hmm. that's a natural instinct you watch <laughs> we have cats you watch the cats when the mama cat has babies right. and when a male cat comes in there she'll just tear into him yeah. Yeah. she'll bite him and chase him out well yeah. it's all about the nest she's trying to keep that nest clean for the babies and and that's literally the instinct that we as, as females have we have an instinct to keep our nest a certain way. Oh yeah, yeah, I agree. Not anything. It's not any reflection on on the man or anybody else, but it's just a natural instinct. And for us to, you know, a woman has to really suppress that to get out of, you know, <laughs> to not be that way because it's it's so natural. She has to become unnatural to not care about her surroundings. Right. Yeah. And as men, we got to be cognizant of that. Uh, I just have a true appreciation for it. And like, we're just not taught it. We're just not, (laughs) we're not taught it, you know, but these conversations are hopefully, you know, helping someone. If you enjoyed this video and previous videos, go to www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. That's www.angel2angelhelp.org and donate. We provide services for the homeless the mentally ill, the elderly, and the youth.